Hey, let's take a moment and uh, let's pray together. So gracious God, we come to you on another uh, Wednesday, or maybe uh, watching this later, but we know that whenever we watch something like this, you are just present with us. And so uh, be present with us as we continue to try to take uh, what we could call next slow, wise steps in following you. And we've been uh, through all this time together. I think it's a principle for us to always be thinking about and praying and uh, living towards of trust God and be wise. So help us to do that. Uh, as we go through, uh, again, what is just unprecedented times, we often hear from the news uh, things that um, leaders are doing wrong, uh, people are doing wrong, Then we know that uh, we want to do things right, but we know that we can get them wrong. We want to do things, uh, um, we, we don't want to do things in a wrong way, uh, so we need your wisdom. There will be times when we won't do what is right, and there will be times when we're going to think that we're doing something wrong, but it might be right, and so we want to be wise with you. We want to trust you. We want to be wise, so help us. We need you. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. So uh, tonight's uh, video from the Bible Project is uh, episode number two in their series of How to Read the Bible. And uh, it's kind of a, uh, uh, it's the story of the Bible, not of how we got the Bible, but the story that's in the Bible. So it's going to go from Genesis all the way to Revelation in just a little over uh, five minutes. But this story, um, well, it has a tension. Uh, this world that we live in has a tension. We're living in that tension right now. So that's why we're coming to you through this means over and over through this technology of being able to be online and, and filming this. So we just keep praying. We just keep walking through these days. have gotten longer than any of us anticipated. We don't know how it's, gonna re, uh, how it's going to slowly reopen. We believe it's going to reopen, but we don't know what it's going to look like on the other side. So we just, we're, but we're in this together. And so I've got um, uh, uh, the directory here. We're using a new deal that uh, Deanna's been working on. They've been using, the music team's been work, using Planning Center online, but there's also a Planning Center people uh, feature. So uh, all of the information, your addresses, uh, birthdays, anniversaries, the cell phones, uh, email addresses. So we just, um, we want to do as much shepherding, as much caring for one another. I keep calling, calling you. Again, hopefully we got the right cell phone numbers, got the right email addresses. We'll try to check on that. Um, if we don't, or if you want to just make sure that we got the right one, you can always email any of us on, on staff for us to uh, get that to you. So, um, so they're just always going to uh, be this I idea that how can we uh, keep calling each other, texting, emailing. Um, I just, even when I'm not looking at the directory, I keep thinking about so many of your, your names, your faces, uh, our, our, the calls that we've uh, had. I made a list of 60 people to call just to make sure that, you know, try to get everybody called that's on our list. And even when I don't get an answer, uh, when you don't, because, you know, again, probably my name, my number doesn't come up as a recognized number yet. And I hope that we can change that. I, I get it if you don't answer. I'll, I'll leave a voicemail. Because I don't answer usually any phone call, phone number that I don't recognize, that doesn't, isn't identified. They can, they can leave a voicemail and I'll get back to you. Uh, so again, but just want you to know that um, we're going to keep trying to reach out and to stay connected to, together. So I just, I, I, I miss you. Um, I, I love you. I know that you're trusting God and being wise. You're following Jesus. Again, thank you for praying. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for serving uh, during this, this time. I'm going to keep saying it over and over again. Just hope to see you sooner than later. So again, looking forward to um, the song that's prepared uh, for us to worship our wonderful God with together, and uh, this, the Bible Project video, and I'll be back with a few thoughts after that.
through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance. I believe that you are my fortress and you are my portion. You are my hiding place. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe through every blessing, through every promise, through every breath I take, I believe that you are provider, and you are protector, you are the one I love, and I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way and the truth, the life. I believe you It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today with mercies that are new. All my fears and doubts, well, they can all come too. Because they can't stay long when I'm here with you. It's a new horizon. And I'm set on you And you meet me here today With mercies that are new All my fears and doubts Well, they can all come too Because they can't stay long When I believe you are The way The truth The light I believe you are the way, the truth, and the life. I believe you The Bible's an important book, but it's really long. Yeah, it's a collection of many books written over a long period of time, but altogether they tell one unified story. So, what's the story of the Bible? Well, it begins by introducing us to a beautiful mind, the author of all reality, a being called God. And he has the power to take the dark chaos of the uncreated world and bring about order and beauty and a garden full of life. And to crown this accomplishment, God appoints these creatures called humanity. Or in Hebrew, Adam. And they're made as God's image. Which means that they're commissioned to rule this beautiful world on God's behalf by harnessing all of its potential and creating even more beauty and order. This is a story about humans using their power to do meaningful, life-giving work. But the question is, how? Yeah, humanity now faces a choice that's represented by a fruit tree. So humans could partner with God and find freedom by trusting in his knowledge of good and evil. Or they could seize power and define good and evil on their own, which, God warns, will kill them. And they hear the voice of a dark, mysterious creature that tells them the choice is simple, take the fruit. 
It'll give you power and freedom to rule the world on your own terms. And so they seize this knowledge, and as a result, they become suspicious and self-protective. It leads to fractured relationships, violent power grabs, and ultimately, a whole civilization, Babylon, that has redefined evil as good. And so, God scatters this corrupted human project. And here the story of the Bible takes an important turn. We zoom in to the story of a man and a woman who come out of Babylon, Abraham and Sarah. Yeah, God promises that from them will come a new people, a nation that has another chance to make the right choice. And if they succeed, it will open up this new way forward for the rest of humanity. And this is why the rest of the Bible story is about this family. And it does not go well. Despite God's personal guidance, Abraham's family gives in to that same temptation to redefine good and evil on their own terms, apart from God. Even when their best people were in charge, rulers who loved God's guidance and had divine wisdom, even they gave in. And so Israel was warned by their own prophets that these choices would lead them back to Babylon, this time as conquered captives living in exile, and that's exactly what happened. So even with God's personal guidance, Israel fails. Who can succeed? Well, the prophet said that the story wasn't over. God's going to send a new leader to Israel to cover for their failures and to transform the people's hearts and minds so that they can make the right choice. And so the part of the Bible called the Old Testament ends, and these promises are left hanging. And then the biblical story continues into the New Testament. We're introduced to a man who comes from the line of Israel's kings, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said that he was bringing all these promises to their completion. He confronted that dark, mysterious evil that all humanity has given into and resisted its power. And then he announced that God had arrived to rule the world through himself. Jesus taught about God's definition of good and evil, and he said that real power is serving others. According to Jesus, it's people who love the poor and even love their enemies. These are the kinds of people who actually rule the world. And that's confusing, but also really beautiful. And so is the claim that the story goes on to make about Jesus, that he is God become human, to be for Israel and for all humanity what we could never be for ourselves. He came to take the consequences of our evil into himself, and his sacrificial love proved more powerful than evil, than even death itself. So now humanity's presented with a new choice. Represented by a new tree. Stick with the old way of being human, or venture into this new way. And in the story, those who choose the way of Jesus find themselves energized by God's own power. People who know that they are loved and forgiven by God can become people who love and forgive others in return. The Jesus movement quickly spread throughout the world, forming these new communities of people who follow the way of Jesus. But they faced problems. There was persecution from the outside by people in power, and inside there was confusion, even compromise. Yeah, because following Jesus is really hard. And so the movement's leaders, called apostles, they wrote letters to comfort and to challenge these communities to stay faithful to the difficult way of Jesus. And they're called to hope for the day when Jesus will come and change everything. And so the Bible ends by pointing to the future day, when all wrongs are made right, when evil is eradicated, heaven and earth are united, and humanity can rule the world together in the love and power of God. Okay, so that's the story of the Bible, and it brings all of these books together. But what's interesting is that each book contains a different kind of literature that contributes to the story in a unique way, and that's what the next video will begin to explore. When I was uh, viewing the video with you, um, one of the things that just popped out at me is one of the statements that one of the speakers said that um, following Jesus is hard. So when they were recording that video a, a couple years ago, I think um, that was a true statement. But it's always a true statement. It's a true statement right now. It's a true statement 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, a couple thousand years ago. Following Jesus is hard hard. One of the other things that they talked about at the end of the video is that, um, that, that the story is always pointing to a future day.
pointing to a future day. As we've been thinking about it over the last month or so, uh, the, the best is yet to come is how we've been saying it. And again, we're just borrowing that kind of thought from the Bible. It's always been in the Bible. The best is yet to come. And so that's what the story of the Bible. So we're, we're all living, we're all living a following Jesus story. And tonight, I want us to think about just the idea as we're following Jesus, there's two words, we press on. We press on. So this last uh, weekend, Saturday and Sunday, uh, our, my son, our son Jared asked if I would help him construct a, a metal storage shed together with him. And so it came in this box, a very, very heavy box, probably about six feet in length and three feet uh, wide and just four or five inches deep in that. Uh, but all these metal sheets and there were some bags of very, fairly small screws and then some uh, nuts and some uh, um, uh, bolts, low bolts and washers and an instruction manual step by step. Kind of if you uh, have children and uh, you're into Legos and maybe the children are just a little bit older, just let's say that it might have been sort of like a um, 3,000 piece Lego set and you've got to get it all together eventually, but it's going to take a lot of time. So on Saturday, as we're going through this, we got through maybe the first three, four hours and it was going to still take many hours to construct it completely. So we had to make kind of an inner choice there of we just need to keep pressing on. Let's just keep pressing on. So after a number of hours, uh, Sunday afternoon, again, it was just wonderful to be to, together and to do this together as a father and a son. And so uh, we, we uh, got it done. And so we're very, very ha happy uh, for that. So we had to press on as this project was, you know, not just going to come together by itself. So there's always this tension in, in pretty much all of life in so many ways that as we're trying to press on some, to, towards something, there's something that's going to press against us. And so there's going to be this, this tension. And the Bible uh, has that throughout the whole story. And that was this idea. That here's this Adam and Eve. And then there was that dark, shadowy figure with the little uh, snake tongue that came out. And so uh, God is wanting to press them on towards what is good. And, and that evil one wanted to press them on towards what was evil. And so there's this tension of pressing on and pressing against. Just a couple of uh, uh, Bible passages, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. And we'll kind of just kind of see if we can wrap these uh, things uh, up. So here in the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 3, it says this. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. And then this illustration, as surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. And so, again, here we are in this month of May in the spring rains. We had some winter rains, you now the, the spring rains. And so God is just present. Again, there's forces that don't want us to follow God that don't want us to follow. And, and so they've always been, I mean, thousands of years ago when the prophet Hosea was being inspired to write these words that were, it's recorded in our Bibles, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. Why do we need to press on to acknowledge him? Because there's forces that don't want us to acknowledge. Why isn't God doing something about COVID-19? Why is so many, so, so many of us suffering in our lives? Why are so many people around the world suffering? Why isn't God doing his job? It's, there's forces wanting to press against the acknowledging God as the Lord. But when we uh, turn to the New Testament, and again, the Apostle Paul, when he writes to the Philippians, and again, he's writing this from a prison, not a, uh, a prison of 2020, but a prison of, you know, uh, 48 AD, um, and uh, 
So he's, as he's writing this, I mean, there's, there's so many forces, so many things that he has had to suffer in his life. We can read about them in some of the other places that he writes. And that. But in, in Philippians chapter 3, he writes these wonderful, wise words for us as we want to press on following Jesus, no matter what happens to us in this life. So here's what we read in Philippians 3, beginning with verse 12. Not that I have already obtained all this, all this that is the best of the yet to come, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Remember when we, a couple of weeks ago, this idea that God wants to hold us close to him, and it's by his strength, not by our strength, that we can be held on. But again, there's forces that don't want us to be held by the Father. And then he writes, Friends, I do not consider myself to yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straightening toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal, toward the best is yet to come, toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So the best is yet to come. Again, it reminds me of that wonderful, wonderful song that just captured the imagination of millions and millions of people a lot of years ago now, but still it echoes with us. I can only imagine, I can only imagine, will I be able to speak? Will I fall to my, my knees? Will I, just, uh, just who is this God that we're going to go and, and see? So uh, let's um, begin to wrap up uh, these thoughts in that um, I want to ask this, this question, what's the hardest story that maybe you've heard maybe today or over the past number of weeks? Boy, there's a lot of hard stories out there now, aren't there? Sometimes when we hear those stories, they're just so gripping that it just, just, it just does something to us when we hear a tragic story that's happened because of the sheltering in place, because of the disease. It just is, there's a lot of hard uh, stories. And again, the, the, this idea that, um, um, that older loved ones are, are dying alone, oh. uh, some people that have to have these uh, delayed funerals, they can't even when a loved one passes, they can't gather together, they, they're planning a funeral uh, later on. No unemployment. Uh, when we think of all the things that have happened in the sports world, that's often such a huge part of our culture and, and society, that concerts and now uh, graduations, there's weddings, there's birthdays, there's uh, EAA has uh, gotten canceled, Life Fest just got shifted to the month of August. And, and we know that even in these coming days, these coming weeks here, especially for us living where we're living, um, there's just more to come that's going to be pressing against us as we're trying to press on to get back to living. But we're in God's story. We are all in God's story. There is never a time throughout the, from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, throughout all that story, where there were not people that were trying to press on to believe in God, and there were forces of this world trying to press against them to not believe in God. So here we are. We're pressing on in this time when this world is pressing against us. So, uh, we know that Jesus, when he comes to this earth, he's going to press on to the cross, and then through the cross, to the grave, and then out of that grave, and then back to glory. But we know there were all kinds of forces that were pressing against him. So uh, let's consider these words from Hebrews chapter 13. It's from the message Bible paraphrase of the Bible, and we'll kind of start, we'll wrap up with, with this. Do you see what this means? And all these pioneers in Hebrews 11 talked about all the people of the, of, in the story of God pressing on to believe in God and all the forces pressed against them. So do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on that we would press on just like they were pressing on, it means we'd better get on with it. 
We need to strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat. No parasitic sins. I mean, just great language that Eugene Peterson put in the Message Bible. And then this, uh, this great, uh, keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the goal. He's the prize. He's the one that has gone before us. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed. The exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way. The cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. So when you find yourselves flagging in your faith, again, just that, that pressing against us, oh, we're just, we're just taking so much, we're flagging. Go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility he plowed through. It was pressing against him, but he kept pressing on towards what God had for him. And then this last line, just love this imagery. That will shoot adrenaline into your soul so that you can keep pressing on no matter what is pressing against us. And so following Jesus is a pressing on story. And there will be things pressing against us. When we pray, we're praying to press on towards God, knowing that there are things that's going to try to press us from wanting to even pray. When we do our daily 15 and we read the Word of God, there are other forces that want to press against that. And why are you bothering with reading the Word of God? When we do serving kind of things, there, there's things that, why do you want to serve others? Just serve yourself. And so we press against that idea and we press on to serve others. When we give, again, Keep everything for yourself is what this world tells you. And God says, no, 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 no. Press against that. Press against that. Because that's not the way of life. Doing, keeping all things for ourselves, serving ourselves, or even just praying for ourselves that God would do good things for us. It just starts getting smaller and smaller. When God invites us to press on towards him, things just start expanding. As we pray for others, as we serve others, as we give so that others will know Jesus and be able to follow him, that's the pressing on God is calling us to. And so we press on. And so let's press on together as we follow the story of God, as we live in the story of God. Let's press on and pray together this evening. So Lord Jesus, we watch you, and oh, how good it is that you press on all the way to and through the cross and all the way back into glory. So help us, because we want to follow you, we want to trust you, we want to be wise. And so from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, keep help us, helping us to read in one way, it's just the same story over and over again. People that you are calling to follow you, forces that try to derail them, that try to shove them off of the path, and you keep calling them back. You keep forgiving. You keep doing that for each one of us. So as we're in this most troubling of times, we know these huge, huge forces Man, it's just rattling us so much. I mean, it rattles me. But yet I know that we can trust you. You've been faithful to all the people in the past, all these saints that we read their, we've been reading their stories. Many of us were years and years that are um, uh, lined, lined out for us in uh, Hebrews chapter 12. So we keep pressing on with our story. And we don't do it alone. We do it together. So Jesus, gracious Father, Holy Spirit, you are for us. And with you being for us, all the forces of the world pressing against us cannot keep us from you. You will help us to press on and to press through until we arrive to glory, until we arrive 
for the best is yet to come. So we pray all these things in your name and together once again we pray this pressing on prayer that you gave to us, Jesus, when you are here. So from your lips to our lips, we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So did you hear that pressing on even in the Lord's prayer? His kingdom, there's forces that doesn't want his kingdom to come to us. There's a kingdom that wants to take us away from that kingdom. And so we know there's that tension. That's the story. His will be done because we have this will. Uh, uh, our trespasses, and that, that's pressing against, uh, deliver us from evil. Because there is a kingdom, there is a power, and there is a glory. We love you. Keep doing this together. Thanks once again for being online. You might want to share this with some friends if you know that they're kind of discouraged. Again, keep calling others. We'll, you know, we'll keep, I'm going to keep calling you, and we're just going to keep doing this together. We're pressing on, following Jesus. Because we know, you know, always, Christ in us, the hope of glory, and nothing's going to stop it.